Hello, I'm Odin, and I was commissioned to make a full set, not like a series of things, but a wraparound set that can be used in a video. It's the driver's side of the DeLorean time machine from Back to the Future. Now real quick, I want to give a shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring today's episode, and there'll be more about them towards the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. Since this is a set, I'm starting with a couple of small set flats. Now these are simple wood forms that'll be the base for the back of the wall of the cab and the driver's door. They're made from some smooth scrap wood paneling and one by twos. Now set them up on a couple of supports or kickers to get them to the right height that'll work for the average simple office chair that the guy can sit in. My set is about 54 inches tall, which is much taller than the roof of a DeLorean, which is only 44 inches tall. But I only need the inside view. The actor just needs to look like they're driving the DeLorean from the movie. I build out the driver's door frame. It's still just simple wood forms, two by twos for the door frame and more paneling for the solid shapes. The real look comes from the EVA foam I add over the wood. The foam allows for the curved shapes of the car interior, door upholstery, and other curved panels. I alternate between gluing foam on with contact cement or just stapling it directly to the wood. Which I use depends on if the camera is going to see the staples or not, and how much tension the bent foam is going to put on the glue seams. Now the better way to do this is just to use actual car parts and panels for your set. But the DeLorean parts are a little expensive to get. If I was just making a set for a basic economy car, I could just go to a pick and pull and buy the parts that I needed, or even better, just shoot in an actual car. I use a heat gun to open up the cuts in the EVA foam, so it'll look like the sewn lines of the upholstery. And it also seals the foam so less paint is needed to actually cover it. Then I move the door outside and spray it down with Plasti Dip. The back wall bulkhead just needs some regular house paint. Now, I had sprayed it with a primer first, I probably didn't need it, but I did it. Then I rolled on a couple of coats of gray paint. While the paint dries, I start cutting up some quarter inch plywood to make the flux capacitor. This is the one thing that I am excited about because I've never made a flux capacitor before. And while I pitched the idea of making it really simply, I got excited and did more than I needed to. I found a site, rookcastle.com, and they had very detailed information about Doc Brown's time machine elements, including what parts were originally used in the movie and what the dimensions were for them. So my flux capacitor is pretty close, even though it seems like it's bigger than it should be. I cut two front panels that I can then sandwich a piece of polycarbonate plastic between them. That way there's no glass to break. I use 3M ATG tape to stick the plastic to the wood. ATG tape is used for framing pictures and it's not so much double-sided tape as it's just really thick sticky with no actual tape film. I've had this roll for years but you can still get it from Amazon. After sanding the edges smooth and rounding the corners, I can seal the box with sanding sealer. This will fill in most of the wood grain and then spray paint it gray. I leave the white protective film on the plastic until the paint dries. Also on the back wall, on the other side of the driver, is the status indicator display or SID. Now the actual prop was a matrix of 200 LEDs that pulsated like an old stereo meter. Now I was not gonna solder together 200 LEDs, so I vinyl cut a sticker to look like LEDs and stuck that onto another sheet of polycarbonate. I built up a plywood box and then glued in some green and yellow plastic film to color the fake LEDs. This film came from Tap Plastics and I'll actually glue to the polycarbonate with Weld On 4 glue. Then I can tape in a piece of paper to diffuse the light and that'll just allow the circles to glow instead of looking transparent. And I can add some black tape on the back of the paper so not all the LEDs will be lit up fully. The SID is silver, not black, so I started to paint it, which was a really bad idea. I wanted it to work, but it really looks very bad. It took a long time to look this bad. So I went out and bought some silver vinyl, cut a new one, removing another set of 200 circles, and remade the faceplate. Then I just add some screws and I bent some EMT clips to be hose clamps. Behind the driver's head is a pair of heat sinks. In my set, you'll barely see these, so I just cut some basic shapes from MDF wood and screwed them together and spray painted them gold. To make the black trim on the flux capacitor door, I rub a piece of paper to get the edges of the wood and then I can make a pattern to cut out some EVA foam. I wanted to use ATG tape on the foam and it does stick, but after a day or so, 
The tension of the foam being stretched from the wood down to the polycarbonate window was just too much force and it pulled away from the plastic. It still works, it's just not as well as I'd hoped. Instead of buying a Dymo label maker, I just made some fake labels in Photoshop, printed them out, and stuck them onto the flux capacitor. I cut out a piece of foam cord to use as a pattern for the insides, which I will make after I mount everything to the back wall. I mark where I want the SID to go, cut out a hole to let the light through, and screw it on. Now I have pieces of 3 quarter inch plywood on the back because the wood panel is just too thin to put a screw into all on its own. I put the flux capacitor box on the same way, marking where I wanted it to go and making a big cutout for the lights and pre-drilling holes so I can screw the box to the panel. And I bought some PVC pipe fittings so I can dress the sides of it later, but they'll need to be painted silver first. To mount the front panel on and not mark the front of it at all, I screw on a piece of angle aluminum to the inside of the panel and then use one screw on the top and the bottom to hold it in place. This makes the front easy to remove if something needs to be fixed later when it's on set. I need to add the glass to the door because a little window trim is visible in the side shots. I just cut some polycarbonate to fit the door frame and I peel the protective film off from the inside and staple the plastic to the wood. Now you can actually staple polycarbonate plastic, it doesn't shatter. If I had used acrylic or plexiglass plastic, one staple would crack and split the plastic. On the outside, I mark where the window trim is going to need to go. I'll attach adhesive backed foam on the inside to actually be the trim. And I need this trim because only this little piece of the DeLorean window rolls down, not the whole window. So if you watch the trailer for the first Back to the Future, Marty rolls it down. Now I think it's the only time in any of the movies the windows actually rolled down. To finish dressing the back wall, I add wires and circuit boards that I pulled from the e-waste bin at work. Some of these wire bundles are actually really hanging in the movie car, and then I add some more just for the texture. To make the inside of the flux capacitor, I cut a piece of ABS plastic the same size as my foam core template. I mark out where I want to drill out holes later for the lights to go and then glue on some parts that I made from PVC pipe and styrene plastic painted silver. To glue it on, I just use clear PVC pipe glue. Then I drill out the three holes for the spark plug wires, the nine light holes on the ABS plate, and drill out the centers of the silver things. I had Tap Plastics cut me some half inch acrylic that I can use for the Y shape. I painted the sides of it silver, but I kept the edges clear. These are glued right over the holes that I drilled for the lights. I push some acrylic rods through the silver things and the spark plug wires will glue on top of these. There are tubes that go over the half inch acrylic that makes the Y. So I use a bigger heat gun to melt some acrylic tubes and twist the end shut. I cut them down on a bandsaw and glue them on. Excel still makes spark plug wires that are yellow and red. This is much easier than painting some black wires. I cut them to length hot glue the caps onto the acrylic rods and push the ends through the ABS, which is a really snug fit so no glue is required. I bought some battery operated blinking Christmas lights to use for the lighting effect. First, I cut off all the decorative bulbs and exposed just the LEDs. Then I pair up the ones that blink at the same time, drill a little hole in the acrylic for them to fit into and glue them onto the back of the ABS panel and there are lots of extra lights left over, I just don't need them. I added some 3 quarter inch plywood strips inside the box to hold the ABS panel. I can just screw the panel right to the plywood and then color the screws black with a permanent marker. I can attach the front panel and the back wall is done. Let me take a second to talk about the sponsor of this week's video, Squarespace. You can create a beautiful website or online store with Squarespace's all-in-one platform. There's nothing to install, patch, or upgrade, ever. They offer award-winning 24-7 customer service, and Squarespace offers a unique domain experience that's fully transparent and simple to set up. Squarespace is used by a wide range of creatives and people, musicians, designers, artists, restaurants, and more. Go to squarespace.com Odin Makes to get a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Now I need to make the dashboard. I start with a flat board and add a simple wood frame for the raised part of the dash, gluing on a piece of EVA foam to give the smooth curves of the dash. I cut a piece of quarter inch plywood to fit around that first part I made and I plan to cover it as well with EVA. And the dash is big enough that I need to glue together three pieces of EVA floor foam. 
While they set up a little better, I cut out some strips of adhesive back craft foam and used them to outline the little window on the door. Now I can remove the protective film and finally have a clear window. I put contact cement on the edge of the dash upholstery foam and to the wood. Now you need to give contact cement a chance to dry, then it'll stick together. After I glue them together, I staple the edges down so it's secure and cut more adhesive foam to hide the ugly staple marks that were left on the front. Then this is ready for great plastic dip. I cut a piece of wood to be the 88 miles per hour box that's on the dash and paint it white. After three more coats of white spray paint, I add more custom stickers that I printed out. Now these will never actually be seen by the camera, but it's something I wanted to do. I also need the top bar over the windshield where the sun visors would attach. I just wrap a two by two with EVA and add a metal bracket to one side so I can attach it to the door frame. And I'll hold the other side up with a piece of plywood attached to the dash. After all the new pieces are coated with more gray plastic dip, I stapled on the wood 88 mile per hour box and glue on more EVA foam boxes to the dash and add lots of scrap Cat5 and telephone wire running all over the place connecting the parts. And I can screw right through the EVA foam and hold the wire in place. The steering wheel is the one actual car part that I'm using. I took a three quarter inch wooden dowel, pounded it into the mounting hole of the steering wheel, and I slipped that into a plywood box that screwed underneath the dash. That way it can spin freely. Yeah, steering wheel might be a little high, but um, yeah, okay. I should move this to somewhere better, clean up, light it better, and see how it looks. So this is it. This is my DeLorean set. I've even got the side window because they wanted to be able to have reflections. They'll actually have guys that can hold a light and move it along the window here, kind of out of frame, to cause the reflections as if the car was driving. Because I can pretend like I'm driving all I want. I can even try to intercut with scenes from the movie, but it's pretty obvious that I'm just sitting in a dark room in a computer chair in a, you know, cardboard set. But that's okay. Because uh, I had a lot of fun. I got to make the Back to the Future DeLorean. That makes me really pretty happy. And I hope you guys enjoyed it too. So Doc, you made your time machine out of a DeLorean, but plywood and EVA foam, this is how Odin makes. If you like this video, you can buy me a coffee. And if you like what I do, you can support my channel on my Patreon page. If you have ideas for something for me to make, please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture. Shit!